honor that the uh, taxation rate for the calendar year 2024 be set at .2330 on each $100 of assessed valuation of property within the college district and that certification of same be forwarded to the county officials at the appropriate time. This rate reflects a reduction in the tax rate. All right, we've got a motion. I'll second that motion. Second. Ms. Rokal. Trustee Featherston? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Hager? Yes. Trustee Garrison? Yes. Trustee Shaw? Absolutely. Yes, uh, need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn, sir. Two in a row. Two seconds. Gary seconds it. All those in favor? Uh -huh. All right. All right. Let's move on, and I'll, I don't know if I have to gavel again. I hope that wasn't a mistake, but I re gavel. Let's, let's do the invocation and pledge, Dr. Hager. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, and, and we're thankful that you get the school year up and get it right back rolling, Lord. Lord, we ask you to be with this group today as we make decisions concerning this institution. Be with everyone's here today, Lord. Once again, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed us. Lead us, guide, and direct us in all things that we do. All these things, Lord, we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Lord, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, looks like we got approval of agenda and minutes. All right, consideration and approval of the agenda. I make a motion we approve the agenda as presented. Anybody second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, consideration and approval of minutes of the June board meeting. <coughs> I move to approve the minutes as presented. By the second. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consideration and approval of college financial report. Charlotte? Okay. Turn to page 13 of your board book. And we're looking at this as our. These are still not final June numbers, but they're pretty close to final. Um, of course, we'll still be making some audit adjustments and so forth uh, to these to close the year out. But these are pretty close to your final results for June. Um, not unlike what you've seen in previous months uh, compared to the previous fiscal year. A little bit ahead on uh, tuition and fees uh, compared to the last year, as well as ahead on state appropriations. We got a little bit more than we did the year before. Um, the big difference there is with our grants. We had several grants in the previous fiscal year that ended, so they're not in the current fiscal year, so you can see quite a large difference in our grant categories related to that. Uh, on the following page, we're looking at our expenses. Um, again, very similar to what you've seen in previous months. Uh, slightly ahead in spending <coughs> compared to last year, but that reflects uh, increases in wage rates largely. And then finally, the net of the two revenue minus expenses, again, looks much smaller than it was last year, but largely due to those large grants that are included in the previous fiscal year. Um, <coughs> following that is uh, the next two pages there are just those same numbers, just in details. Uh, so you have a current year to date, bottom line, uh, estimated again of uh, just over $639,000. Following that, we look at the same uh, June, fiscal, June fiscal year end, uh, but comparing budget to actual. Um, so seeing how we budgeted. Uh, you can see that with tuition and fees, uh, we are actually just a little bit below our projections, but you'll see in a minute, uh, we were also very conservative on spending. Um, somewhat ahead on, in a couple of revenue categories, uh, particularly in non-operating revenue, which is uh, property tax related. Uh, the bottom half of that page is those expenses that I mentioned. You can see that we have a number of those categories that were left unspent, so we were very uh, frugal on that end as well to, uh, to balance out the revenue. Again, the next couple of pages are just those same numbers in detail. And then you see another budget to actual report that is for July. So this is the first month of our new fiscal year. 
So these are uh, very new numbers. So that's only 8% of our fiscal year, one month. Um, you can see, though, on the top half there, looking at our revenue, we're off to a good start with tuition and fees, just under 50% of those uh, booked, which is a pretty good place to be in, in July. Of course, we'll continue to have fall um, registrations build that number up into August as well. <coughs> Other areas you see auxiliaries, again, as students come back to back to campus, we have housing and, and bookstore and those sorts of things, they are off to a good start. On the bottom half of that page, then, is uh, that first month of expenses. Uh, every year we talk a little bit about institutional support is always a little bit front heavy. We have some large software annual payments um, that happen right at the very beginning of the fiscal year. So that's why that institutional support category looks a bit heavier. Uh, the next page then is, uh, again, those same numbers uh, just in detail. And then on page 23 is our capital budget. <coughs> we have uh, some work going on over at the Lago Family Sports Complex that's related to the addition for the baseball practice facility. And then um, towards the bottom there, you see that we've uh, begun to replace some of our fleet vehicles that are aging. Following that, we look at our cash and banks. You have two different ones. One is uh, at the beginning of July, one's at the beginning of August. So uh, this one, this first one that says at the beginning of July, you'll notice the blue pie is different than the second uh, report. And that's because this first one that stated July 1 is based off of 25% of our FY24 budget. And then uh, the second pie is based off 25% of our FY25 budget. So since our 25 budget is larger than our 24 budget, that increases that 25% that we keep as reserves. So in general, though, looking at our cash position, very typical uh, for this time of the year, getting the fall, uh, fall semester started and so forth. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty typical of what we see. In the next page, you, you see that we still have the $5 million CD, and we've actually got some accrued interest on that now as well. Um, that, I believe, uh, matures in August, so we'll see uh, a renewal on that soon. And then following that, uh, the bid report does not have anything to report. And then finally, on page 33, are some proposed budget amendments. At the very top of the page, you see those are the numbers that were on the original budget that you approved in your uh, June board meeting on June 19th. And then we have a few changes there um, you can see listed <coughs> that have changed those numbers a bit, mainly because of grants that uh, when we built the original budget, they were estimated numbers. And we've since received the award numbers, so we've made the adjustments to, to make those numbers a little bit more accurate. Uh, notably with the enhancement grant, because it is one that has a match requirement to it. When we spend less, we save money, and when we spend more, we have more match. So um, adjusting that one to the actual board actually saved us a little bit money. Uh, so that's why you see the adjusted budget has a $24,000 surplus presently uh, related to that. And then that second little group there uh, on the top half are the proposed changes. Uh, many of which are just filling uh, vacant personnel positions and things like that um, without two major uh, changes there. And you can see that that will bring us down to an $18,000 uh, budgeted surplus if those are approved. The bottom half then is the capital budget. Um, very few changes <coughs> there. Uh, again, uh, we're asking to increase the fleet vehicle budget. Um, we just kind of start off the budget with a flat number each year that we want to build back into uh, the renewal of our fleet as it ages. Uh, this year we happen to have located a few extra deals. Uh, you know, we usually are buying used vehicles, so they're you know, somewhat unique opportunities. So we're actually going to buy three vehicles this year <coughs> to replace some of our things. Um, and then finally, we have a land purchase um, that we are in the process of, but that will also be funded through a grant. And that is the end of my report. Any questions? You said replacing vans. 
just newer vans? Yes. Okay. We, yeah. Our our vans are um, 1980 models. Hey, I was here. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in that in that vintage. Yes. So as you can imagine, they're quite high mileage. Um, so yeah. I have a lot of mileage too. They they needed they needed a little refresh. <laughs> Your comparisons, you said the federal grants, is that mostly CARES money? Yes, a huge chunk of it is. Yes. Okay. Well, very, very good report, uh, very good job with the budgeting and talking that, the whole team, uh, you and Dr. Payne as well. You know, I just, I just <coughs> love that it's typical that we've got $16 million in the bank, so I like typical. So, uh, need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the financial report. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Uh, President's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, beginning back in June of June 21, we held the 11th annual Three Rivers Golf Tournament. Uh, it was heavily subscribed. We sold out. Uh, raised a good bit of money for scholarships and operations of the Endowment Trust. So another successful year with that. Uh, now I'm going to ask uh, Coach Jeff Null, our athletic director, to come forward and talk about our all academic honors in athletics. I kind of duplicated what you have on the screen here, but I just want to make sure everybody has it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great year academically last year. Um, the NJCA recognizes out of our sports men's and women's basketball, baseball, and softball for all academic um, awards. Uh, we had 39 athletes receive all academic awards. Um, that tells roughly 100 athletes <coughs> out of our sports sports. So, very high percentage. Very, uh, very proud of that. Um, 3.42, uh, that's pretty solid. We had uh, three teams receive all academic team awards. That's a three fire or higher. Uh, women's basketball, baseball, and softball. Um, so three out of those four teams qualified there. Um, with the department won the Harold Eddy Award. That was uh, that's a big, it's a big traveling trophy that goes around. Uh, I think middle area, we gotta get it from them still. Uh, but uh, they don't wanna give it up, but we beat them. Um, we won that award and that was recognized at our AD meeting. Um, and it, it was just fantastic up and down. Um, if we could duplicate those numbers every year, we're going to be in good shape. And that award is for the top GPA for the entire department out of the uh, out of All the conference teams, yes sir. Out of the conference. Yes sir. So all the uh, MCCAC teams. Um, the only ones that don't include, I think, are Crowder and uh, Metro. So, um, yeah, that's a, a very prestigious award, and, and, uh, and we earned that, so very proud of that. But, yeah, it was very good. Do you have any other questions on there? Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. And now I'm going to ask Ms. Jonelle Seifert if she will come forward and talk about this year's drama camp. Um, I used to have a poster in my classroom that said, don't be afraid to fail, be ashamed not to try. Well, I'm here to tell you that every single child did everything right. Nobody failed, and they all gave 110%. And how many did we have? 84. Yes, we had um, 84 children. They came from Copper Bluff, Dexter, Donovan, Bloomfield, Bromsley, Perryville, Neelyville, Kewl, and Bernie, Greenville, Elsinore, Mexico, and Arkansas. So, <laughs> yeah, great group. Um, I always have two objectives for camp, and they're always met, thank goodness. One is that every child has a wonderful week of theater education, and number two, that the college has a profit from dropping camp. So both objectives are met once again. Also, if you look on the program that I left at your desk, um, I did sell some program ads for $25 each, so that helps defray the cost of the camp, too. 
I also used the money for a little second grade girl who wanted to come to camp, and I don't think she had seventy-five dollars, so we let her come over. Um, what we do is we teach theater games, we do improvisations, we act, we perform, we sing, we dance, and we learn about readers' theater. Um, and then on that Friday, we always have a performance at 11 o'clock for family and friends. So we did our readers' theaters, and we sang to Wells Fargo Wagon for Music Man, and we danced to I'm a Believer from Shrek. The kids were adorable. Um, session one had Poplar Love High School teacher Nichols McDaniel helping me. Session two had elementary teacher Hillary Widener. And then both sessions had former campers Cooper Hornbeck, Abby Murphy, and Caitlin Conover. They did a great job. And I'm happy to say we all have the same vision of what Drama Camp should be. <coughs> so Drama Camp always sells out. And last year's the first year I had to turn kids away. We just had too many. I couldn't handle 47 or 48. So um, thank you, Dr. Payne, for letting us have two sessions. I was going to have to cut off as 40 for each session, but I did let 42 in each. So. 84 children had a wonderful time. Thank you. Uh, drama camp was really well received. We got a lot of great feedback. Uh, we received a, a pile of thank you notes and complimentary notes that came to my office that we'll uh, pass on to you okay. uh, so that you see what they're saying. But grandparents really happy, parents really happy. Kids had a great time, and I don't want to move past this before I say thank you to you. Um, you are drama camp, and it, it exists because of you, and you make a huge difference. So we are so grateful that you're willing to do this year after year and create so much fun and so much opportunity for these kids. And I'm pretty, you sure, I'm pretty sure that I was your favorite former student. However, I don't think it was around back in, in the <coughs> But I, I, I think you've done a great job. Of but you were a wonderful Wilbur the PA. I was. <laughs> I was <laughs> Thing. 
a lot of great feedback on that. Then August 12th, we were able to host convocation. Uh, our first day back kicks off the academic year. Uh, we all get together in the Tenant Center, uh, go through some college updates, uh, get a little bit of training, move on to lunch, and then during lunch, uh, we recognize all of our years of service. So those are the pictures on the left, our uh, years of service. Um, right there is Professor Cindy White. That is her 40-year recognition. So really big deal there. And our Education Achievement Award. So convocation was successful once again and kicks off our final week of registration, which leads to this past Monday, first day of classes. There is very few things in the academic year more exciting than first day back with all of the students. They're coming in, they're excited. Uh, we spend a lot of time this week, uh, everyone on staff watching out for a particular look that's on a student's face. That particular look says, I don't want to say anything, but I totally don't know where I'm going right now. And uh, we look for that and actually come up to the student and go, how can we help you find something? And then you get the look of relief and go, where's this? And so by Wednesday, which is today, they're starting to get their bearings, know where their classes are. Uh, but we are still registering a few students. So we're not done yet. That will trickle in through this week after the first week of classes. Uh, we'll have a hard no and start putting them in second eight week classes instead of startup classes. So great start of the academic year. Great things happening. Some upcoming events. Uh, on September 7th, we have the ninth annual Run for the Arts. 100% of the proceeds go to Fine Arts Scholarships. Um, they help fund the students that want to participate in our Fine Arts programs, but are not necessarily majoring in those programs. Uh, so it really is a fantastic program. You actually don't have to run to participate. You can buy a t-shirt, you can sign up as a virtual runner, or if you want to run, feel free to come out and run, or if you don't want to run, you can walk. So this is one of the ways that we fund our Fine Arts Scholarship. We're nine years in. It's been a successful event every year. Um, thanks to all our sponsors, and uh, especially thank you to Gary Croy, who comes out sets up the course every year and makes sure that everything runs, no pun intended, the way it's supposed to. Um, but looking forward to that this year. Then also on September, one in the morning, one in the evening, Battle of the Balls, Clinton Park. So come one, come all. You will see some of the top rodeo bull riders from around the region <coughs> coming to compete for prize money. So this is organized and put on by the Three Rivers College uh, rodeo team. This year we're going to do bull riding and barrel racing. This is a fundraiser for them. So all the proceeds of the event go to support their program and their students' needs. Uh, a lot of fun for all ages. Prices $15 for adults, $10 for kids 8 and under. Uh, just drive out to the park about 6.30 from the place to park. Enjoy the evening. Then on 17th, uh, the 17th of September, we have Constitution Day. Uh, that will start off in the lobby of the Rutland Library on this campus. Uh, we'll play a documentary about the Constitution. It'll, that film will then cycle throughout the day. There will be a book display and a voter registration drive. So join us for Constitution Day. And that, sir, is the President's report. Thank you, Dr. Payne. And we do have some executive session items. <coughs> so I'll entertain a motion for that. <coughs> so moved. Second. I'll second motion. <coughs> Roll call. 